What's going on, everybody? It's Thursday, and this episode is brought to you by Division Street Auto. At 595 Division Street, you can give them a call at 401-723-7080 if you need any kind of work done on your vehicle. They also do state inspections. Go see my man, George Ferreira. He's a very good guy, honest man, runs a legit auto body business he also does car sales too i believe so i mean if you're looking for a car you can go check him out too if you mention this ad you can get 10 percent off the labor also we have tops electric supply showroom and gallery in providence on point street that's 120 point street if you need anything regarding lighting any kind of lighting whatsoever outdoor indoor up door down door all kinds of door lighting any kind of lighting <laughs> at all sconces chandeliers uh they also do you know consulting they do in-house consulting if you need electrical supply go see my man sean over at tops supply is it top supply electric tops electric supply how do you say that yeah either way uh go see sean at tops supply tops electric supply showroom and gallery that's what it is you can give them a call at 401-861-0695. If you need new tires, you can go see our friend Dory over at Onyville Tire. She's been there forever. New tires, old tires, used tires, blue tires, red tires. Satire. Satire. Yeah, whatever you need. Maybe you have a, a lump on the side of, side of your, you know, side of side neck. wall of your tire. No, 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 the side of your neck. <laughs> The side wall of your tire. I mean, she knows her shit. Go over there and check it out. Check her out. Check her and it out. <laughs> she's a she's in Providence also, 86 Plainville Street. You can give her a call, 401-421-1800. Also, we have JW and Son Construction. Anything relating to construction, you can give him a call. They specialize in commercial, residential, property management, all kinds of stuff. His name is John. And you can give him a call, 401-487-4134. Last but not, but not least, if you're looking for something to do over the week, over the weekends, if your girlfriend dumped you, if your boyfriend dumped you, if you, both of them dumped you, if you're taking a dump and you want to f- <coughs> find something to do later on, Go on Facebook and look up Donkey Dodgers Poker. And what it is, pretty much, it's it's nightly, well, daily and nightly, nightly during the week. Uh, It's an event that you can go to. It's very social. It costs $20 most of the time, $25, maybe sometimes $30 on bigger events, special events. But what it is, it's a buffet ticket. And they'll feed you, and you get entered into a poker tournament for free. If you do well, if you win the nightly event, that could enter you into a monthly tournament, which is worth, I believe, over 2K. Also, if you win a nightly event, you could get a free buy-in to the World Series of Poker in Vegas. That's 10K. I mean, so for 20 to 30 bucks in a good time, have some drinks, socialize, meet new people, play some poker, eat some food, why not? Alrighty, guys, we have no guest today, but Josh and I are here to fulfill your listening needs. Let's go. Time to talk some shit with the J Squared Podcast. Here we go. What's up, everybody? Yo, yo. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you got the J Squared podcast coming into your eardrums. It's Friday, Junior. Um, thankfully, and I don't know whether to say fortunately or unfortunately, but we have no guest today. You are stuck. You know what? With I think it's fortunately just, sometimes. Just Jay and me today. Nobody wanted to hang out with us. So we got a couple things we just wanted to get off our chest and share with the crew. It's, did I already say it's Friday, Junior? Well, anyway, it's Thursday. Friday Eve, Friday Junior. We already had that right, conversation. We just, we just had that off-air conversation. We're not going back down that road. <laughs> Fuck every Eve. 
especially the rapper, the female rapper Eve. And Saint Eve's. No, Adam's wife Eve. Who's Adam? Oh yeah, Bible. That's you know that's not real. Yeah, that's all fucking bullshit. That Bible Shit. story. <laughs> Anywho, so you wanted to talk about, or I, not that you wanted to talk about, but a, a lot of people. I want to talk about everything. A lot of people will ask me just, you know, whether I've seen them recently or I haven't. Just old friends, people that I run into, family members. Just they, they ask about the podcast. You know, how's it going? How do you get started? And I feel like we've never really. Oh, absolutely. Know, we, we've never explained it. I don't think we feel the need to explain it, but people are curious. So. No, well, you know what? I, it was just not yesterday. Or was it yesterday? No, the day before. Somebody asked me, like, what, what did you do? How did you how did you start a podcast or why? Or like, I think a lot of people think about it. Not a lot of people execute it because they don't know necessarily where to start. You just go out and buy my buy mics and stuff, and, and that's exactly how we started out. You know, mm. people were telling us like, you know, "Oh, you, you should do something, Jay or Josh," and then we kind of like put I think our heads people, together. I think people do that with with a lot in life, though. Not even just a podcast. So many things that you know we and in th- I don't even like saying we want because I feel like when you want to do something, you do it. Yeah. But we um we almost lust after the ideas of doing things that we might think are cool or we might be interested in and then we just kind of it, it fizzles out you know like uh i think for a couple of years we've been talking about doing a youtube channel or a podcast something along those lines yeah absolutely and it, there's really no there's, not, there's never a time when you're just ready you know like you're never just like all right we did everything we need to do now we're ready you have to eventually take a first step it's just like starting the gym starting you know uh, a new absolutely. diet, starting, working out, whatever the case is, you have to just take that first step. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I 150% agree with you when it comes to almost anything. There is no right time. The right time is now. right now. Yeah. yeah. If you wait for the right time, you'll just never do it. You just Yeah, doesn't, it, I couldn't have said it any better. So, but what it came down to is, you know, we just, I, I don't want to, you know, I'm not trying to take all the credit for it because you He's were. He's about to take all the credit. For I'm it. about to take all the credit. All the credit is due. But you were an integral part of it getting started, but I feel like I was really, um, you know, really motivated initially and really did, there was a sense of urgency and because I knew we could talk about it forever because we had talked about it forever. And, uh, you know, it just came down to me just saying, hey, Jay, let's go. We're going to do it. Like, I, yeah, I wanna... Once you bought the first mic, that's when I was like, All right, exactly. he's, he's for real. And, and that's kind of what, you know, I, I kept coming at you like, hey, you know, either send me the money or buy it and show me that you bought it. Because I think we both kind of knew that until we invest money in this, it's not real. Yeah, it's, it's just, just an a, idea. It's something we talk about yeah, it's just a, it's a Exactly. It's a plan, you know, just bullshit. So we probably talked about it. And even went around that, you know, back and forth for maybe a week or 10 days. But forget it. Once we click that Amazon, like, buy now. And then we <laughs> ended up buying another a Mac and using Audacity and, and just kind of like like Josh said, just taking those baby steps. We were, were we had an idea of where we wanted to go, uh, and it's just about, you know, learning along the way. Because, you know, what? right now we're, we've obviously never ran a podcast before, um, and we're learning so much on how to do it, you know, going through it, editing video audio there's stuff that i've learned from you guys even just you know because i'm older and i mean tons of much, shit. much older marketing um social media marketing i mean there's just i have a merch store the whole the whole nine getting merchandise um if you could say the most valuable thing that you've learned so far from doing this what do you think it would be the value as in monetary or it's just valuable you know as in all right let me let me explain my thought and then yeah, maybe yeah, that'll absolutely. help you sure i think something that i've taken away from this because it's, it's interesting, even though it's pre-recorded, you know, none of it is super live, we know that we're not going to cut out if we fuck up. You know, if we make a mistake, we're not taking that out of the episode. Um, if we stutter, whatever, it, it is what it is. But I feel like as people, for the most part, communicating with other people is something that we can all improve on. Because I feel like it's natural to interrupt. Yeah, and absolutely. I feel like it's natural to not really listen to what somebody's saying more most of us just wait until it's our turn to respond. And I think this is hearing it back and hearing myself in the beginning, you know, interrupting you or interrupting George, our first guest, or, you know, cutting each other off, not really giving each other the, you know, the respect and to, to finalize a thought. So I feel like that's something that I've learned on how to do better because I don't want, you know, the audience, the people that are listening to see it and be like, wow, this, this shit had never lets anybody get their word out. And I'm glad you actually even said that because 
we almost have to monitor not necessarily the content of what we're saying, but how we're delivering it. And or like I, I literally, you know, over the t- over time and through the episodes, and you don't really see that in the last episode because I was I was cutting Jenny off a lot. I think cut to uh, this, George. Sorry, Jenny. This is why. Can we show this to the <laughs> yes, camera? Was- Let's not blame Jay. Let's blame Mister Eighteen Hundred. <laughs> yeah, we drank that uh pretty much almost that whole bottle, but it's it's almost choreographed in a sense where. If Josh is talking, so this is this is what l- you're learning when you're doing a podcast. That if you're doing it with somebody else, that person's talking, and you have to wait for the opportune time to then either you know retort or add on, or you start talking yourself. And with the listeners, you guys, the or the, or the watchers, you guys, uh, in mind. So it's kind of like it's it's almost like a dance. You know, you you kind of like wait. For the other person to stop, and then you know, like if he's taking a breath, if he if he already <laughs> included his point, you know, until obviously later on in the episode we start drinking, and sometimes that it's goes out the all. window. But now yeah, it's it a is fucking a shit show. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, for the most part, when we're starting out and we're sober, <laughs> you know, it is kind of a. It's um, true. We, that's I think that's probably the most important part. That, that's that what I learned. figured. I figured it would be similar to mine because again, I think that when you start to do that and you start paying attention to it, I don't just turn it off when I'm out of here. You know, I was having a conversation with my barber today. Yeah. And, you know, I was just, we were talking about it, you know, and I, I noticed that I do that. And, you know, I, I think I'm a better listener is what it comes down to. I'm a, I'm a better conversationalist. I feel like I can just not be so impatient to get my point out there. And there may be times where you may start saying something and immediately I want to interject because I have something to add. And by the time you finish your thought, you know, I may not even get to voice that first right. initial thought that I had, you know, and that's okay because ultimately you kind of have to take in your entire, um, sen- not sentence, but paragraph, whatever you want to call it, you point know, your entire or- point, And then, you know, respond to that as a whole, not just nitpick everything you say, whether it's right or wrong, whatever the case is. But so that's been cool. I think the um, second biggest thing outside of just the communication dance is the, the actual content. Meaning I learned so much from Willie ways and, you know, guns and that whole thing. Yeah, I was taking cool the, people on the field trip up there. Uh, v- vegans. I learned a lot from Jenny, um, you know, and even, even Jay, you know, Goodwin, when he's talking about dealing and stuff like mm-hmm. that from the dealer's perspective. Uh, and if you don't know us three that make up the J squared podcast, we're, we're avid poker players. So, but I mean, uh, it's the content. Also, I've learned so much. You know, like just it, even our own friends that were guests. You learn things about them that I mm. necessarily didn't know before. But true, true. So I think that would be like the second thing that I've taken away so far out of just what thirteen episodes. Is it thirteen or fourteen? Either way, that doesn't is matter. It 15? I, no, I think I think Jenny is fourteen. This is fifteen. Okay. Oh, shout right. out to guys! Celebrate! It's episode fifteen. Baby, we made it. Break out the red panties. Keep I saw a stat today that 90% of podcasts don't make it past episode 7. Oh, shit. This is what I got to focus on, too, because sometimes I forget that we're, we're actually, you know, even though we're still local, we're still small, we're still growing, number one. We're like our trend is going Wait, in the right direction. Sorry to cut you off. That's yes, what we were, we were talking earlier about listening. And if you're going to interrupt somebody, at least say, hey, sorry to interrupt you for a second. But you just stated a, a what's the word I'm looking for? It's not a fact. Fallacy. A fallacy. All right. We're not local. Don't we have no loco couple, as in crazy? Don't we have a couple listeners? Australian. We have three Australian listeners. That's right. And one in the Zealand. Philippines. One no, Zealand. one New Zealand. We're well, fucking worldwide, my baby. Family. No, it, it could be any <laughs> random person. We don't know that for a fact. Yeah. All right. You know, we got the three people in Colombia that have internet listening to us. We're Gucci. I got a friend in Argentina that listens. We're worldwide, baby. The J2 podcast is All right, uni- that, intergalactic. Yeah, right. <laughs> I totally misspoke. Okay, we're not local. But what I guess what I'm saying is that we're starting out relatively small you know everything's relative right. um and our trend is 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 awesome it, it's we're consistently growing but just the just the thought of having you know an audience number one people that listen to what you are saying it's kind of relieving it's like therapeutic to some degree it's mm. it's a good feeling you know uh, like when i went to tops electric yesterday the day before um there's a guy derek that works there and he he was like, oh, Jay, you know, 
I like the podcast. I listen to it, et cetera, et cetera. That's just a good feeling, you know, that people are they're interested in like, what you have to say. What you have to say, what your takes are, I guess. And I, it's weird because the last episode, I was like, no, he gives a fuck about what Jay O'Leary said. And you actually corrected me and said, no, no, people listen to the podcast to hear what we have to say. So it's true. And it's not, it, it is true. I think I have to like just remind myself that, you know, this is. This is this big, and it's it's growing. It's slowly growing, but that's it, an awesome feeling. Yeah, and it's when I say that people care what we have to say, it's not to say that our opinions hold any weight or they're valid, you know. But we're for an entertainment. We're, the, we're regular, you know. We're just we're we're not. I'm not a millionaire, you know. I don't have a fan base, you know. We're the same. We're just regular people. So I feel like it's it's a lot more relatable to a lot of regular people. I'm not a ten dollar there. Damn, dude. That's- <laughs> It's kind of brutal. Um, But anyways, you know, it's been a fun ride so far. And not to be mushy, but I really am grateful for anybody that's, oh yeah, you know, listened or watched a clip or liked the page. You know, anybody that asks how's, you know, how it's going, it's it's cool to hear back, you know, because we do, we put a lot of time into it and we're working hard and we want it to get better. And people have given us feedback, you know, some really good and encouraging and some critiques where it's like, hey, you guys should work on this. And we try to take all of that in and, and give the best product we can without ever sacrificing what we get out of this because there's a lot of selfishness that goes into it. I'm going to be honest, you know, for me, this is fun. You know, I want everybody to enjoy it, but I feel like the second it's no longer true and we're not being honest. It's no longer fun. It's no longer fun. And that's see-through, you know, um, a very, a really specific example is I had a friend of ours, you know, make a comment about something that I said that offended her. And after re, you know, replaying the episode and hearing what I said, I mean, I'm sorry that she didn't find it funny, but I found it funny, and I feel like humor is subjective, you know, and I'm not going to censor myself. Very obviously. Yeah, I'm not going to censor myself because somebody doesn't find it funny. Yeah. My intent is never to hurt anybody. You know, it's, I'm not, I don't think ill will of anybody. I don't, I oh. don't think that, you know, my race or my gender way. is more valuable than everybody. I, I would make an insensitive joke about any microcosm of people person place thing what if it's funny to me then it's funny you know right. and that's just where we're at so if you can't handle it then fuck we're being a little bitch i don't know what you want me to say wow that's, that's that was insensitive you know and we went from how, how I we're that doing was in a podcast to you <laughs> telling people stop being a little bitch <laughs> no but in all seriousness i love this person and i respect her a lot and she's such a nice person but stop i feel like she bitch. yeah you know not stop being a little bitch but hey I'm, I'm glad that you felt comfortable enough to come back at me with that and i'm sorry that you know, you didn't find it funny, but just understand that this is a podcast. I yeah, mean, every <laughs> you might find a lot more funny shit, so don't judge me on the one thing that you didn't find funny. <laughs> right, right. But just know you may hear it again. You know, but that. You, I, you know what? Going back to the whole building a podcast and what it's like, uh, you know, a lot of people don't even consider the fact, uh, you know, that when you're working with other people and we're all friends, but there is a, a dynamic there that. You know, sometimes we get along. Sometimes we have different opinions about how we're gonna we're we're gonna do something, mm. um, how we're gonna advertise this X Y Z. So I mean, that's part of it too, and it's it's I think it's pertinent. I think it's imperative uh, that you don't let those things, whether they be uh, personality differences or whatever, whatever it may be, let those things discourage you from moving forward. At some point, you're going to have to get over like get over things and just, all right, hey, look, if we want this to succeed, if we want this to blow up as big as that, as big as we want, I mean, our feelings should never necessarily come in, you know, yeah. come no, into play. Not come into play, but I mean, uh, prevent us from doing I those things. I think that's really similar to how the atmosphere must be in a strip club. <laughs> Because I feel like the girls can get pretty what? catty. They can get catty and talk shit to each Remember high oh, school? Oh, they absolutely do. Think about like high school, you know, how the girls will treat each other. And, and women are so much gossip, more competitive. You know, they gossip with each other. But you're in a, like, I'm comparing that, you know, there there is a way I can tie this together. I know it. Just give me a second. I'm a little high. I stop being a little right. bitch. <laughs> no, so <laughs> there there's a, uh, what's the third Friction, you know, there can be friction there, but ultimately, you know, these strippers, their goal is still to be in there, be sexy, be, you know, they're vulnerable, you know, but they still need to get out there, hustle and make money. Right. So like you just said, you know, sometimes you work with people like the three of us, Jay, George, and like myself. we have to get along. Right. Well, we don't have to get along. We, well, we can, dis- we disagree sometimes on things, but ultimately we know like, hey, the, the greater goal is kind of more 
right. important than, than our own beliefs. You know? Right, and we if, might be stagnant because of our own beliefs. Right, you know, and like if one of us is going to be tardy all the time, I'm not really going to throw that against him forever. George. Well, I didn't say any names, you know, and if one of us. Josh. Yeah, you know, if somebody's going to show up with no booze and I got to just get stoned for the whole day, then it is what it is. <laughs> no hard feelings. I'm not bitter. <laughs> no hard feelings, Jay. Um, but nah, so it, it was cool. One thing that's cool is when you when somebody that you don't, because not everybody engages with us on social media or YouTube or comments or likes it and talks about it. Right. So when you run into somebody that you didn't know was listening and, you know, supporting and following, to me, that's pretty cool. Like I was at the barbershop today and I didn't, I knew that he knew of the podcast, but I didn't know that he was listening. He said, Hey, how's the podcast going? You know, it seems to be pretty cool. And I was like, yeah, man, you should check it out. And he's like, he stops me and he's like, dude, I listen to every episode. He's like, you know, I just listened to the whole one with Jenny and the vegan, like, and, and everything was, I trust me. He's like, I listened to every episode. That's he's pretty like, cool. Thank he, you for yeah, listening. He yeah, was, I, I'm subscribed and shout out to Ant Cambio, uh, Atomic Salon and Johnston at Wood Avenue. Obviously, Crispy, he gets my hair shorter than anybody else can. Hey, shout out to him. Super Ed. short. You showing that, George? I just got. I just <laughs> went there today. Um, yeah, so if you notice me, notice is a really, really short haircut. And Sasha actually said that, like, if I do this with my head, it looks like one of those little wrinkly dogs because well, of the head fat. do that. You, with well, I don't mind. Those dogs are cute. You yeah, know, and then she starts right. petting my head, and that leads to her petting other things. And But I was at the barbershop, and, uh, yeah, so it Shout out to you, man. Thanks for uh, <laughs> <laughs> thanks for lacing me up today, and, and thanks for listening. Um, the barbershop is an interesting place, by the way, when you're there. I feel like I'll, that's, it's bro. always one of those places where you – there's, like, just a code of of conduct and understanding when – where you – it's it's almost comparable to, like, a, a boy's locker room. You know, like a men's locker room. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> like a boy's locker room, like an <laughs> elementary boy's locker room. <laughs> no, but it's like you're you're in a room full of guys, you know, there's just bullshit and there's shit talking and you know how it is, right? Oh, yeah, of course. That's exactly what a barbershop is. Everybody's, it's a bunch of guys, they're all talking guy shit, getting your hair cut, sometimes they're listening to music. I mean, it's absolutely a guy's kind of atmosphere and ambiance. I always think it's a little awkward, like, you know, we'll be in there. Um, sh- shooting the shit, getting our haircuts, whatever, talking about music, bitches, porn. You can talk about Dicks. anything in there. Everything is, but then there'll be like a, you know, like a mom that comes in with her little kid sitting along the wall and everybody's like, I fucked the shit out of that. But he would, well, true, but and the mom. The conversation never changes. <laughs> and the mom. And the mom. <laughs> you dirty <laughs> bastard. How do you go there? So I can't sick. even make that joke. I know. I can't no, joke sorry. about I'm fucking sorry. little I'm kids. Sorry. I don't know how you can joke about being a pedophile. It just throws me off so bad. Hearing it out loud must really. What? <laughs> like, what? Why are you going to say it like that? <laughs> no, so uh, what I like about the barbershop is that it never, it doesn't change, you know? Like, it's not like the barbers or the customers in there get awkward and say, oh, we can't talk like this in front of a woman. I feel like what happens is, you know, the woman is in a place that's predominantly uh, housed guys. by men. Yeah, predominantly yeah. guys. And then they just sit there feeling awkward because we continue to just See, talk I about porn. Like and, it. Ooh, tell me more, sir. Because they know they're walking into the lion's den. So I think they purposely like, yeah, let me bring my son so I can show off my MILF skills. MILF skills. Yeah. That's keyword gold. Look at George. It's like MILF skills. <laughs> what do you think MILF skills are? I have no fucking idea. I just came off the top. I can tell you a MILF <laughs> skill right now when a MILF is pushing the baby in the stroller and she fucking leans over to just like fix the kid and her tits are jiggling and she's wiping his cheek with the fucking napkin. With her areolas? <laughs> That's a MILF skill. It's another MILF skill. Yoga pants 24 7 because you don't have time to get dressed. That's almost all women. That's a MILF skill. More with kids, though. I feel like moms always rock comfortable pants, dude. And comfortable hey. pants are just yoga pants. Do so you remember cheeks are just the like, first time bow, bow. you had sex with a woman that had a kid? Like, you always have had. It's only been one. Women that have never had kids, and then you start having sex with this one woman because you're getting older and whatever. Do you remember the, that difference? I do. Like, clear as day. Yeah. How about with a woman that's pregnant with, but it's not your kid? You fucked a woman that's <laughs> pregnant? No, I haven't. I'm asking, like, if you were, like, done poking that. her child in the eye with your dick, bro. <laughs> that's so gross. No, I have not. Um, I mean, I remember, I remember uh, you know, Sasha before kids and after kids, and 
Oh, well, it's I'm incredible. Ask you. Yeah, okay, no, it's, hey, it's still the same. It still, it still feels the same. I mean, it's still great. You know, we got to be a little more discreet about it now. But why? that's it. I mean, it's been easier after we um, signed them up for wrestling because they aren't. Like, they're just used to, like, people being on top or underneath, so we can just be like, oh, we're practicing wrestling. It's easy now. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Where the fuck were we going? What were we talking about before? I have this no idea. We're talking, we're talking about the podcast, man. We're talking about the barbershop. Oh, yeah. We're talking <laughs> about the barber. Oh, MILF skills. What's another MILF, MILF skill, skill that, like, late, you know, chicks with moms do better than anybody else? Like, that's chicks what Chicks with I'm, moms? Chicks with kids. I'm sorry. So, what do you think a MILF does? That's super sexy that a chick with a kid really can't do or doesn't do. I shouldn't say can't do. Honestly, I, I don't know. I've never thought about that. I, I can't even think like. No shit. Me neither. Women just, <laughs> women just do what women do. You know, I don't I don't think it just because you have kids. I, I don't know. Maybe does it differ? I don't know. Hmm. Like you think they, they have a different strategy now or like, I don't know. I don't even know if it's an intentional shit or not. You know, just like because I'm thinking like. I hear, I read a lot, and I hear a lot of women say that, like, when a when a man is a good father, like, that's that's a turn on to them, you know, like, when he can really take care of, like, the the household chores, take care of the kids, and interact, and just be a good dad. Like, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of things that say that's sexy to women. So is there anything to men that is sexier when... They have a oh, child? Yeah, that they... I don't think so. I don't, and I think that's probably a lot... It's a, that's the difference between men, men and women. And women like, with, like, I don't give a fuck if you have kids. I think it's or a, don't or I, do. Or. It's gonna get, I don't mean to get deep you know, on it. Like, first deep of all, I can't it. really get that deep. But I think it's really a biological thing. You know, like Biologically, in, in our DNA, women seek out that protective. And when they look for men, you know, and when subconsciously when they want to sleep with men, I really think there's a strong tie to reproduction there like how that man is as a father and as a supporter and as a protector and a provider well, it goes back to that book uh what is it men are on mars women are on venus well, that's women, an old right? are, yeah or something like that and i actually believe it's true that, that you guy think we're says, from mars no that guy in the book says women fall in love with how they feel and men fall in love with what they see and i i think that's true i, I do you know for the most part i'm saying do you know Obviously, why most men are attracted to like curves with a small waist and like why we like wide hips, why that's attractive. I have no clue. There's theories that that is because that when you see a woman with wider hips, it's more of a chance that she can successfully, you know, and, and give labor. You know, she has like childbearing hips and that in our DNA. All right. Whoever wrote like, that's a fucking idiot. I don't know. Look, if that's you keep, keep, keep that there. Yeah. That you know, is that, not why I like a woman with. Well, wife. you might not know it, so that's that's, that's sexual, what's crazy. You can't you can't say that's not because you might not know it. But like they, I like a nice ass. Like I don't. I don't but there's fuck re- about what well, hips But doing. there's reasons why and certain I'd things you not have kids. Well, there's reasons why certain things to trigger you. certain feelings, you know, in your brain. I guess things so. that we may not know about. That's fucking weird. It's it's not really that weird when you think about it. Because you know? I don't know. Because like well, men, thinking, maybe I don't know. Men, maybe I'm men, fucked up. Men are biologically <laughs> programmed to like, and we're built literally. Our bodies are built different than women. We don't carry the baby, and women carry the baby for nine months. But we can go and get ten different girls pregnant. Women can only get pregnant at one time, you know. So that's another. When people say like, "Oh, men are dogs," and there's a double standard. I mean, they're kind of there. Well, there is there is a, a there is standard a, because we're different. Hold on, there is a cultural double standard. But there's also a reason that we act like, you know, that men act like that and that women think it's a problem that men act like that. You know, like slut shaming girls, that's a societal thing. I'm not saying that, you know, if you're a single adult consenting person, you can't go fuck whoever you want. But biologically, men are almost like driven to get as many girls pregnant as they can to have as many girls have their kids as they can. So their their name and their lineage can carry out. It's just, you know, I'm just regurgitating shit that I hear doctors and scientists say. I mean, that men I'm no expert on it. Want to impregnate as many women? Fuck that. <laughs> I think you're missing I the don't. point. I think you're missing the point. There's a there's just like a primitive thing in your DNA that's it's not that you necessarily I want to impregnate is, them. Hold on, let me. Yeah, go it's ahead. not that you want to impregnate them, but that's the underlying reason for the urges that you have to fuck all the time. You know, maybe maybe not so much now, but remember in your twenties, probably like seventeen through twenty eight. Yeah, it's like you just, dude, you could be doing anything at any time. All you want to really do is fuck, though. Like that's all you're thinking about. 
twenty four seven. All I want to do now. Yeah. Well, I'm, I mean, you're older now, so I get it. If that's yeah, you know, why died not? down. No, I'm kidding. Sometimes I poke a hill, oh, a hole in my fucking sofa He's got pillows. That fucking Furby mask behind you. <laughs> yeah, but right. I don't know, George. You got any of that pulled up? Yeah. It's, but it's, it's there was there was researchers at Georgia, some Georgia college and the University of Texas that did that showed photographs of women's bodies to men, and then they figured that women with curvier bodies or thicker bodies had the same reward centers activated in their brain as if they were taking pleasurable drugs. Yeah. Cool. So, in, again, you know, co- consciously you might not be thinking, it, hey, I want to get every girl I can pregnant, but that's where that drive comes from to always have sex is to just keep shooting your load okay. as much so, as you I mean, can. Psh, psh, I, I, psh, like psh, Oprah. Psh, you get a baby. I, I, you get a baby. You get a baby. You get a baby. Hey, I totally understand, like, you know, <laughs> wanting to have sex, but when you add wanting to get women pregnant, like, that's... But that's your subconscious want. That's the reason for your want to have sex. Pregnant, Consciously, you don't. I mean, you, you've studied scientists and biology for a good amount. You have to realize there's a difference between conscious thought and subconscious thought. I don't know. I yeah, like... but what's the, what's the reason you don't want to get 100 women pregnant? He's saying, he's saying basically primitively. Yeah. Like when there was no responsibilities, there's no legal repercussions, there's nothing else. It would be fucking like animals. Oh, okay, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you know yeah absolutely. Mean? Wow, way to shed some light on that. Yeah, thank you for that Perfectly. insight. Because it's true. Like, if you didn't have an obligation to be a dad and support this kid oh, financially, no, no, I'm not. then you wouldn't. You know, you'd yeah. have no problem going and fuck. You wouldn't worry about getting them pregnant. You would just have sex and be out. It's just and the, there'd be no the like shame that they're born into. Yeah, the world today, the everything. I mean, if we all lived out in the field, yeah, yeah. I'd fucking, I'd be fruitful and multiply. And I think there are actually cultures and like uh, I don't know if they're ancient or they're still out, but there are tribes out there that all they do um, is fuck. No, that the the kid is raised like women aren't slut shamed for having multiple kids. It's actually encouraged because you mean multiple kid, kids from multiple fathers, right? The kids are actually raised like through the community, so right. You know what I mean? So it's it's incredible it how how much the. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know exactly what you're saying. I right, pass that pen. I need to uh, have some some no, herbal I encouragement. Yeah, I totally totally know what you're saying. Like it's just not. It's different than what we're used to now. Right. Because now and there's so many outside sources teaching you what you should, influencing exactly. Like yeah. women, naturally women, you know, if you're a, a small beta male, I'm sorry, I don't mean to insult anybody, you know, because I'm not 6'10", I'm not Jason Moa, but women, for the most part, are instinctually attracted to big, strong men, you know, because in their in our DNA, you know, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for somebody that can protect impregnate you. you and protect and give you shelter and support, like, yeah, protection. That's it. Yeah. You know, because just like some animals, you know, some males hunt, some females hunt. In the human species, the males are the protectors. You know, we're, we're built bigger. We're built stronger. We have a lot more fight. You're very in us um, I'm not trying to be, you know, I, because I think there are a lot of things that women can do and should do that we don't do, that we, we're not built to do. Yeah, no, you know? I'm just I'm teasing you. I I agree with you there. I mean, it was pretty. That's pretty like scientific almost. And if you disagree, then well, you're a fucking idiot. Ouch. Sorry. I don't mean to be crude. All right. <laughs> no, <laughs> <What the fuck? laughs> Sorry, dude. I was, ex- I was exhaling, and you know, you gave me the weird look. All right, so I, you know, personally, we just I'm always way the fuck off. Yeah, we did. Personally, I'm all, I'm always attracted to curvier women. Like you know, obviously, that's I, it's normal. It's expected I, that you are. I think it's because I, me personally, I associated with feminine being feminine. Well, we just know? told you why you do that. Well, yeah, fuck that. <laughs> but I give you the truth. You know, like the the scientific reason why you are curvy women attract are are attractive to me because they're fem- it's more feminine to me. That's how I would articulate it. Again, it's. It's just one of those things like I can say I'm attracted because you can say you're attracted because but there are reasons that we don't consciously think that drive those feelings, you know, those um, signals that we're giving and sent to our brain. You know, it's, it's crazy to think too. it's almost scary to think that your body um, can act and react and control your thoughts in a way that you can't control. You know, you can't program your sub. Well, you never mind, but you can't control your subconscious right now. Why would you want to? Um, I guess you don't really have to. I mean, yeah. no, I, I think there are good reasons too. I mean, let me try to think of an example. Why would you want to program your subconscious? Um, to help with discipline. 
you know, if consciously I wake up and my routine is to not work out every day, you know, if there's a way you could program your subconscious to give you more motivation than laziness. Yeah, it's a shitty example. I thought it was a good example. I mean, I'm sure you, you can't be happy and, and think that you're successful in every single aspect of your life. And a lot of that comes from the- I think you can. I, no, no, I think you can. I'm talking about you and me personally. Oh, oh you know yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah, and but a, and a lot yeah. of that comes from the decisions that we choose to make. You know, right now I'm not, I'm not, I'm out of shape. And every day I make a decision to not work out instead of work out. Right. And if my subconscious could, some way or another, take the motivation to work out and have that weigh much more heavily than the enjoyment of just being lazy and not working out, then I would see you know positive results from that. So that would be a reason that I would want to program my subconscious for sure. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so anywho, speaking of working out, guys, I'm on day three of uh, the keto, the ketogenic diet. Obviously, you know, it's 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 a lot of people do it. You know, it's uh, it's almost like a fad popular, diet. Yeah. It's popular, but I think it's popular because, it, you know, it works and it's simple and you're not. You know, you're not forced to take any supplements or, you know, do any like fake shakes instead of eating. You know, there's just not you're still eating natural food. You're still eating whole good foods. You just it, it's not much of a transition. And, it, you know, it produces good results. So I can't tell you much on it. I do hope that, you know, if you're listening or watching this, you hold me accountable. I'm only on day three now, but I'm doing my best. You know, I want to get in better shape, get healthier. And that's where we're at. So. Well, I mean, that's the biggest part is that first step. So, I mean, once you get over that first step of actually putting your thoughts to action. Now, just like to put the podcast, wrapping it back up to, to, over there, you know, again, you just got to do it. You got to buy the microphone first. You know what I'm saying? And true, in true. your case with keto, you got to say, hey, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to take the necessary steps. And that's pro for me, that's probably the hardest part is actually Day one. Day one, yeah. yeah. I think that's the hardest part for everybody. So, and I think right after that is maintaining over a long period of time. Because mm. um, it actually, you know, just like anything, it takes work. And, you, you know, I know you're talking about your subconscious thoughts and stuff like that and our decision making. Well, if you look around you, everything that's around you is a result of your decision making. Everything that you wear, your weight is a result of your decision making. Mine too, obviously, whatever. There's very few things that in life that just kind of happen to us, you know. Um, very few. Yeah, very, very, few. very few. And uh, I'm, gl I'm actually, I'm glad, and I commend you, man, for for taking the steps. And because uh, you know, obviously, being your friend and business partner, we want you around. Um, <laughs> we don't want you to die, dying, dude. It's be but, pain know, in the dick to kind of replace you. And technically, <laughs> like being overweight, which I am, I'm overweight myself. You, you actually are. You're deteriorating yourself faster. I mean, yeah, so. it just gets to a point, man, where you got to say, listen, I, again, and it's one of those things, just like the podcast, you know, I've told myself for a while, like, hey, man, I want to get back, get back to being in decent shape, be able to run around, be able to jump around and not get so exhausted so quickly and, you know, this look look better, obviously. So it's just one of those things where I said, fuck it. You know, I didn't I didn't wait for a day. Right. I didn't plan I it out. I didn't say it's the right time. You know, you were talking to me one day, and you were just like, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, no, I can't eat that. You know, like, doing keto started today. Right. Just did it, you know. Just said, fuck it. I'm going to do it. Um, something that triggered me was a uh, shout-out to Diz, Dave Sweeney, man. Like, he's he's done it, and I I haven't seen him in a couple months, and he looks fucking fantastic. You know? And, and the and key I, Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, 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 go ahead. I was going to say, like, the key to, to keto is severely cutting back on your carbohydrates. Um, and sugar. Well, it essentially can be, you know— uh, the same, because I think carbohydrates turn into sugar. Isn't that starch? Um, then again, I'm. I don't know. I'm no fucking nutritionist, but <laughs> I just know they say, "Hey, don't do sugar, don't do carbs." But there, there are not side effects. I don't know what the right word. Uh, there are things that happen during doing a keto diet that can be, you know, a drawback. And one of those things, because carbohydrates, they. They transport water to your muscles. So if you're working out and you're trying to build lean muscle mass, which should be the focal point. George, of, you got, sorry, the pros and cons of keto on here? The I'm focal point out. of almost any nutritional plan, diet, exercise routine should be to build lean muscle mass and decrease uh, fat. 
So if, if you're trying to build lean muscle mass at the same time as burning fat, which is a very hard thing to do, by the way, and you're cutting out carbs or eating very little, well, now the, the, the hydration is not going to your muscles, which ultimately helps build muscle. So mm. it's, there's, a, there's a lot of things, I guess, to understand, you know, depending on what your health goal is. Like some people don't necessarily want to lose weight. They just want to have bulk more up, energy huh? or bulk up, yeah, get bigger, et cetera, et cetera. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it says basically your brain needs sugar, carbs, fuel performance. Yeah. And doctors recommend a keto diet in a medical setting for those who suffer from diabetes or epilepsy or Parkinson's. But it's just like and that's because you're like a specific diet. You know, when you're when you're diabetic, I mean, you can in cutting out carbs drops your blood sugar, like I mean, and that could be very harmful to your body. Um, but for the most part, the idea is if you're cutting out carbs, well, you're, essentially you're, it's a calorie uh, deficient diet. That's what you're doing. It's, it's all kind of the same thing. Cutting out carbs is, ma- is, is ensuring that you're eating less calories. So Really? I, oh, yeah. I've never heard it explained that way. I've never read it that way. Um, yeah. What happens to carbs now if you're not burning them? They like turn when you into eat sugar, these refined carbs. They, they turn into sugar and stored. It's it, gets, it gets stored. So from my understanding, you know, which is a very basic one, I just know that, I, you know, I, I tried keto for a couple of weeks last year and I wish I stayed on because, you know, I felt great, had more energy, you know, right. lost a couple pounds and it was going well. And then I just, you know, just like an addict, I had a relapse, you know, because I think, you know, just from eating it and drinking sodas their entire life, oh, absolutely. You know, we become sugar and carb addicts. You know, they're part of almost every you, There's normal probably times meal. you're releasing dopamine when you're eating something whatever a nice piece of bread just yeah a donut or something yeah. or yeah absolutely you know but so cheers I, to you, I had i had the little relapse but i was feeling great so i know that it works you know and yeah. i know i can't say for everybody everybody's different but i know that me personally you know it it will work because you know it did work i just have to keep sticking with it this time but i was under the impression that or i am under the impression that by you doing the keto diet what you're doing is by not having the carbs to give you energy when you do burn calories or work out your body is now burning the fat that you have stored instead of the carbs that's true where the carbs is almost just like an added layer so your body's going to burn through the carbs before it starts burning the fat when you remove the carbs now it's just burning the fat well actually now that i think about it it, there there's truth to what you just said but there's also again what a lot of people don't consider is that so your body will burn the stored uh, flesh on you and sometimes that's muscle so you take out carbs and your your body will burn not only your fat but also your muscle and that's why it's again it's it, that's going back mm-hmm. to what I was saying earlier it's very hard to build muscle while doing it while yeah Makes while sense. while lo- trying to lose fat yeah i think mo- my my primary focus right now is burning fat yeah. and then i'll worry about the muscle you, you know, I got, I got muscle for days. But, you know, there's things that you can actually do while you're on the keto diet. Just start pounding your body full of amino acids, protein. Um, yeah. You know, you should probably be, I mean, just off the top of my head, without getting all technical, should be probably between 250 and 300 grams of protein per day. So if you're eating six times a day. God, know, that just, sounds like a lot. Yeah, about 30, 30 to, I mean, it's probably more accurately around 30, 30 grams per meal. Mm. That you're, that that's you're a, that's a lot of meals to fit into. What I like about it too is I don't think that the. It's what's crazy is how many times it changes. You know, like how like what the recommendation is, or you know what science says, or what doctors say. Hey, this is what you should do. This is what you should do because, think about, um, you know, like butter for example. Right. You know, for the longest time we were being taught. It's and bad for you. You're right. You know, an influence is saying, hey, you shouldn't have butter. You should try margarine or a butter substitute. You find out that shit's terrible. You know, right. like butter is such it's a better alternative. And- exactly. Or that, you know, fat was what's getting everybody fat, you know, and and we were taught for so long by the FDA and these doctors that sugar is not really that bad for you. So meanwhile, these big sugar companies are, you know, pushing cereal down our throat and pop tarts and all these soda. fucking box soda. And all this time we're thinking, well, it's not bad because we're not having fat. We're not having butter or cheese or all these natural foods that aren't right. processed. And what's so fucked up, dude, is that so much of that pressure for them to say sugar wasn't bad was coming from these big sugar companies paying you know, the, off, the government off. It's fucking sick. It is sick. Now, because of them, I can't eat bread. 
I blame them. I mean, they literally, when I say they, I'm talking about all these, you know, again, going back to big pharma, big tobacco, big agriculture, and whoever. They literally use us as their capital pawns. Like, put a little scare or here over there. They know that the reaction is going to be money be here. Over here, yes. So, you know, if we're trying to sell something, if we're trying to, if, if you came up with a, and I'll just use this as an example, um, another artificial sweetener. Obviously, you would say, hey, look, you sugar people, to, or FDA, tell everybody that sugar sucks so they'll right. be forced to buy, you know. You're just leading the, the crowd, and that's literally what happens when it when you're talking about a co- social economy and stuff like that. Um, that's how these pla- – It's like herding cattle. It's, yeah. It's nuts. I mean, when, when, you're, when you're big agriculture and, and you're scratching political backs and they're scratching yours, I mean, you, you're both going to get rich, and that's – just sucks for us being the pawns and sometimes we just f- feed right into it that whole like what you were saying the whole fat scare when you know we're thinking fat makes us fat well they're just banking on our ignorance <laughs> you know what they did is they just named it like uh tony hedgecliffe did a bit about this in his stand-up that they just name it fat like they're like let's look at people that we don't want to look like and call the ingredient that so they <laughs> stop eating it it's like fat so you're going you're fucking walking down to the you know, to the bakery, you're getting your your bagel with your non-fat cream cheese, yeah. and you're being all coy about it. <laughs> and what you didn't realize is, it was the bagel all the time. That's right. <laughs> it's like what we sh- what we should have did was fucking call people carbs. You know, that'd keep everybody healthy. We start right. calling these fat motherfuckers, hey carby, hey carbs. <laughs> <laughs> Shit would be smooth now. You know, I I really I really really believe that a lot of it's common sense. You know, when it when it when it when it's regarding your health, if you look at yourself, right, and like for me, for instance, I'm about 275 pounds, which is that's pretty heavy for me. That's probably the biggest I've, I've ever been. Um, but obviously, I'm one of those people that needs to lose fat. I still want to retain my lean muscle mass. I mean, I know what to do. I mean, this ain't, this ain't rocket science. It's just a discipline. Of yeah, right. You, you, you have to exercise if you want to be healthy. You have to sleep properly if you want to be healthy. You have to uh, obviously monitor your dietary habits if you want to be healthy. I mean, these are common sense things that everybody knows. This is for whatever reason, we just don't do. Like <laughs> Two fat guys talking diet and exercise. No shit, right? This should what? be a great episode. <laughs> hey, who wants to speak on what are you not an expert in? Oh, I'm an expert in everything. Who wants to speak on women's orgasms? <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know why women fake orgasms. It's not like we give a fuck. Do they? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just it's making never jokes. happened. <laughs> Damn, Jay. Life is tough, man. Not for me. Like, I don't why give a fuck. Why do all these women fake orgasms every single time? Why have women in my whole life faked orgasms? <laughs> I know, like they, it's weird because they fake it like we give a fuck, like, yeah, like who you, who you putting a show <laughs> yeah, on? Yeah, it's not gonna make a difference. For me. Listen, when I'm done, I'm done. Yeah, <laughs> like, right. It's just fucking better off just pretending not to enjoy it. I want to know what the science is be- behind after, after we bust. Why do we get tired? Like, what's what's with that? There's something real strange think, about like you know that. Thirty I seconds think, right after you blow a load, and you're just like, I think that disproves evolution. You want to hear a crazy? I'm not ready for that right <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, you are. Listen, I'm, I'm not ready for that right now. Sweet. Call up Andre. They say <laughs> that I'm not ready. over time, things have gotten stronger and better. That's the whole kind of evolutionary thing. You know, the weaker die off. Well, if we evolved on things that we need and we had to do, meaning like we formed a brow because of the sun to protect our eyes and we do the, you know, we mm. over billions of years, why would we fall asleep after sex? <laughs> It's because all the blood rushes there, doesn't it? I don't know. Rushes where? Yeah. George is embarrassed to say dick. He's like, oh, oh God. He's like, penis. <laughs> Your pee pee. I don't know. There's, there's just something really strange like, about those fucking asleep? 30 seconds after you blow low and how you're just like, oh. nothing matters, dude. It's like this weird euphoria where you're just like, that was incredible. I wonder if us busting a nut and women's orgasms feel the same. To each other. I don't think so. Only because, like, I don't know, man. Like my legs like, don't shake. Yeah, when women, there's, there seems like a more. <laughs> no, I'm saying, well, my. I, I'm just being serious. I think there seems like it's a lot more, like, 
uh, like a body orgasm. Like me, my dick just feels a lot better. Like your and I'm like, oh. belly button's coming? What do you mean? Like, no, like, you know, like you said, like their, their legs shake, their fucking back arches, their toes do that. You know, fucking squirt. Shout like, out to Sasha. Of... All right, anyway. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying you're describing what. I'm, I, yeah, obviously I'm describing her. That. Oh. <laughs> That's what I was saying. <laughs> my bad. That's awkward. You're like their hair gets curly, they their boyfriend starts a podcast and <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I wonder if it feels the same. I I've actually I've always wondered that. You know what I wonder? I always think it's very similar to what you just said. Like just our feeling in general. Like I I, I relate it I think about it a lot when I think about pain and when something hurts. And I feel a sensation and I'm like, damn, like I just, you know, stabbed my hand or I cut my hand and I'm feeling this painful sensation. If the same thing happens to you identically, like, does it feel the same on the same level? And it's crazy because, well, well, I can't say never, but as of right now, we have no way to tell. You know, is there a measurement of pain? I, I guess there kind of is, but it's still based on hearsay. You know what I mean? Like, well, actually, there is one extreme way you could do it or measure it. We know that if somebody doesn't have the what do you call those things? Hands? No, the guy. Nerves. Is, ner is it nerves? Nerve yeah, endings. Ner yeah. Nerve endings. In certain spots, or if you splice one or cut one or whatever, your that part of your body becomes numb. So, and in that case, if I cut there, I'm not going to feel it. Whereas if you if you're normal and you have your nerve endings and all that shit, and you get cut there, you, you're going to feel it. So why don't we just cut all our nerve endings so we never feel pain? Because pain actually protects us sometimes. If you touch something hot that you shouldn't be touching. Duh. I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, think about it. We, we would burn ourselves if we'd never feel heat. Yeah. Yeah. It's fucking true. We'd just die <laughs> somehow. <laughs> oh, so, shit. But yeah, I don't back know. to my original point. So, hey, there's even a reason for have you know, for, for feeling pain is for protection. Whereas falling asleep after you bust a nut, what is, what's the point of that? What? Is that a necessity? I don't know. George, I if why is that? Biological. What you don't have that pulled up already? Why do guys come then get tired? Just click back on your browser. Look in your favorites. <laughs> Look in your favorites. <laughs> <laughs> or is that just me? Do I? Is it just me that gets fucking? Uh, yeah, it's just you because I immediately go for round two, then round three, and then seven. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's definitely a, just like a a rollover. And I put it this way: I don't smoke cigarettes. I never have. But when I see that, you know, that age old stereotype of smoking a cigarette, smoking a cigarette I can understand that because you're in a, a prolactin level. Oh, a that makes sense. I, that was my next guess. That's exactly what I was thinking. A higher prolactin level. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you are curious why we come then get tired, it's a higher prolactin level. And what yeah. does prolactin do for us? No clue. Click it. <laughs> Maybe that's why guys supposedly masturbate every single night before they go to sleep. You know, I've never been a before med jerk, before bed jerk offer. Before bed jerk off. I've always found my op optimum jerk off time is before I get in the shower or in the shower. All right, let's change the subject. That could be too, just because of convenience and how easy it is to clean up. All right, let's really change the subject. <laughs> I mean, um, you brought it up. When do you, when do you jerk off before bed? Uh, prolactin is that what it's called? <laughs> proactive. <laughs> just ignore proactive. Rub it on your face. <laughs> <laughs> grab the viva grab the viva viva <laughs> i wonder if we can get a sponsorship through proactive for that one i don't know man we can give them some samples, <laughs> give <us> some samples. <laughs> hey seriously though i heard i don't know if this is true that like sperm banks they'll pay you like 50 dollars a pop yeah i think so i could probably make a killing not me. I'd probably I'm like one I'm like one for like per month. Nah, I'm, no, I'm just kidding. I uh <laughs> you know what I love when I'm scrolling through like uh Twitter or something, Facebook, Twitter, and you see these articles that say like new study proves semen is cure for depression among women. Oh yeah, I've seen that. <laughs> I always send those fucking articles to my girl, obviously, all the time. So you're no longer depressed now? Um, no, I'm good. <laughs> but you know what uh I did I did read, and it was actually, I wish I remembered the source, man, it was a while ago, but it wasn't like some bullshit satire, you know, website. It was an actual, um, it looked legit, and it was that, because 
we've all gotten the excuse, you know. Sometimes chicks, they say they have a headache because they don't want to fuck. Right. And I finally found the fucking cure for that. There's a study that proves that orgasms cure headaches. So now it's more like her coming and saying, babe, come on, I have a headache. Let's go. I'm like, fuck, but what about babe, all the just work take Tylenol. prior to that? Oh, that's probably torture. Because like, when I have a headache and then you, your heart rate goes up or you yeah. get hot, you know, you almost like feel it pulsing in your head. Yeah, you don't want, you know, to put it. But I'll tell you what, if I could go through, you know, two and a half minutes of torture and I knew my headache would go away, I would do it. Because when you have a headache that lasts for hours, dude, it's terrible. Two and a half minutes? Why so long? Well, there's some foreplay, you know? Oh. She's got to get me wet. She just got to get me wet. That's <laughs> weird, bro. That's so weird. <laughs> you know, I was just thinking, too. Do we have what Placovia is yet? or Placovia? <laughs> what is, is that it like called? a lost land? What is Placovia? Migraine uh, headache sex. <laughs> <laughs> I just looked at the wrong thing. Well, that's where you Google out of that orga- orgasm yeah. migraine headache sex. Yeah, it says, it says <laughs> Not a third, a third of women. If I told dad, yeah, dude, like, I, that's you know legit. What? The, I, I, I find <laughs> it's legit. Dude. I find that this is weird too. So like when 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 I, when you're horny, it's like you're you're a different person. You're a total different person, and it's like once you bust the nut, you don't even give a flying fuck mm. anymore. You're just like. All right, don't touch me. Don't talk to me about it. I don't even give a fuck. Yeah, like whatever. You were you were sexy about two seconds ago, and you're not anymore. So stop it. It's weird that we go through that, man. (laughs) You're sexy, and you're not, bro. If you if you don't, you're lying. You know, it's just a. I don't want to cuddle. I don't want to fucking do any of that. Get away from me. Don't talk to me. At least for well, and I'm not saying that you know. I'm not saying it's. I get horny again. (laughs) See, I don't go that far, but it will last like a couple of minutes where I'm like, no, I don't want to cuddle right now. Like I'm not. I don't want to hug. We're not gonna spoon, you know, and then. A minute later, it's like, all right, I'm back to... I feel like... I don't know if I'm just a different person when I'm horny, but I feel like definitely I after like I'm... I a total different person. Yeah, I, I lied. You definitely are. Because you're super sweet if you need to be. Whatever it takes. At this point, you have a job, your mission. No, like your senses are all like fucking amplified and shit, and you're just like... I don't know. I just look at as there's a mission now, and I need to convince my female counterpart to play with my male parts, and that's the objective. You know, so if I have to do the dishes to do that, if I have to, you know, make a coffee. I know, it's I like to, that weird shit. Whatever I got to do like, to, to succeed is what we're going to do at this point. To get the mission done. <laughs> yeah, get mission accomplished, bro. That's it. And then Service like for self. Hey, and then after that, I'm like, oh, fuck those dishes. I'm going to dirty all of them right now and not clean them again until I need to bust another nut. Yeah, man. I don't know. I, I think I'm a fucking total different person. When, you know, until, and then once I bust a nut, I'm like, okay, I'm back to normal. Like, everybody fuck off. I remember that one time. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the fuck we're getting into today, man. I'm... It's the weed, man. Uh, it can be. We're, we're, how did we get here? We were talking about podcasts. Podcasts. <laughs> We, have, so the bring it back to pod- we were talking about the barbershop, and, barbershop and I, you started talking and I forgot to bring something up, dude. Something that I don't know if it happens to only me in the barbershop, you know, and be honest with me. Don't, you know, play that whole machismo game when you're in the barbershop. Oh, you don't go to the barbershop, do you? What? I, I thought I thought Beth you cut your hair. Been to a barbershop? No, I thought Beth cut your hair, though. But anyways, how awkward is it, dude, when you're just sitting, you got your arms on the armrest and your barber's like hitting the side of your head and then his dick is just against your arm. I don't know. I don't really notice, <laughs> bro. That's I, I can't. I can't be the only one that that happened. You you don't notice. Never mind. That's not. It doesn't happen. You don't notice no, it, bro. Don't like even think I about don't think it. I've ever been in that situation. Oh, it just it's so weird because me. most of the time when I'm in the seat, first of all, that is fucking. Weird. He's like he's in front of me. But now <laughs> now every me. time I go. I'm gonna have to fucking see if I can <laughs> touch the dude's dick. <laughs> see no, if I can dude. touch the dude's dick with it's my like, elbow, <laughs> bro. I just sit there. I feel like I'm being molested. Like no, no offense. Yeah, I love you, bro. You're the illest barber, but I don't want to like move it because now I acknowledged it and it's awkward as fuck. Like so, I'm just gonna like whatever, man. If you, I mean, what do you think your barber is? Your bo- He's just leaning over, cut me. For all I know, bro, it could be his belly Bullshit. button. I hope and, it is. <laughs> it's like, yeah, get your dick <laughs> off his chest. Get your dick off my business partner's <laughs> fucking elbow, fuck man. Will. I mean, I'm sure. What, what is he? Does he stand up like this? And <laughs> fuck. <laughs> grab his dick <laughs> Stop. Please tell me you got that. <laughs> grab his dick on so your fucking elbow. So I'm sitting there. I mean, it could be because I'm wide and I stick out more than most people. It's definitely like his leg. And he's like, oh, Dude. my God, dick. Yo, it, it <laughs> yeah, could be. Right? But all I know is my, my face is forward and... When you sit in a barber chair, bro, like you're you're at like chest high, you know what I mean. So based on the anatomy of the average barber, like 
his dick is going to be like right around your, your elbow, elbow. <laughs> you know, right so, where it should be. So, dude, he's he's lacing up the side of my hair, and then I feel, and again, it could be his leg, but I, like I can't, I'm not going to look. You know, like if I think his dick is on my arm, Bro, I can't smack that shit like, like <laughs> the, a fly. Like just, just like mm. I do one of these. <coughs> Just to yeah. make sure. And he's like, oh, chill, that's my nuts. I'm like, well, what the fuck, bro? What are they doing on my elbow? So I don't know, man. It's one of those things that I'm always like, fuck, dude. I always fall, like, when shit. I'm in the chair, I, I always fall asleep. Oh, like, dude, it's so. fuck. I'm just nah, like, it's the, And it's the vibration, too, of the clippers on like on your head when it's going. Like, zzz, yeah. It's very guess, like therapeutic, so. dude. It's like a little massage, man. It's nice. And then they fucking start lining you up. And you're like, god damn it, man. Fuck, <laughs> it hurts. I like the, uh, the razor, though. The straight. Yeah, they can. Yeah, it definitely hurts, man. It's a. It's a sensation, bro. Like sometimes, it hurt. It, sometimes it Wait, cuts. Like sensitive skin? Not really, but it's an unpleasant feeling. Really? I don't experience that at when all. When they line it up, yeah, because they're they're putting the pointy edges of blades, edges of blades, dude, and it's scratching your skin. You ever you do they ever throw the barbasol on after or whatever it's called? And yeah, yeah, you yeah. You feel that little sting? Well, that sting is because you feel a sting though. I don't. Oh, I don't yeah. know. Maybe I have sensitive skin. I don't know. Yeah, maybe, or maybe, maybe I have. I'm just a bitch. No, maybe I have fucking like leathery, you know, yeah, old leather face, leather face, skin face. What's the leather face from Friday? Not Friday the Thirteenth. Texas, Texas Chainsaw, Chainsaw. Massacre. That's fucking sick bastard. But um, I, you know what? Bum. I always thought about becoming a barber. I thought about it a couple times. Yeah. I, I like it. You know, like I, the whole social aspect, like we were saying earlier, just chilling, cutting hair. Yeah. Fucking, I'd start drinking, smoking weed. I definitely uh, <laughs> throw a few back with the barber. Yeah, pretty often we'll just grab a pack of honeys. Yeah, I would walk cases. out uh, off my chair, look like somebody tried to chop his fucking head off with an axe. Why would you do that? What? Well, I wouldn't do it on purpose. Just because oh, I'm probably drunk and hot. Cut him up and shit. <laughs> yeah, usually <laughs> if I go light him up, you fucking saw his head off, like you're fucking part of the jihad. You ever get a bad haircut? Like, well, first of all, let me preface that by saying, so when you get your haircut now, yeah. Who cut? Does Beth cut, or do you still go to the barber shop? No, I still go to a barber. Do you, but so for you, the longest, not the longest time, but for the last several months, Beth actually, you know, she was cleaned it up, yeah, whatever. All right, so it's a little di- like my barber. I've been going to the same barber for five years. Yeah, and it's you know just him consistently, same yeah. same barber all the That's time, good. all the time. Because he knows how you like it. Hey. You guys can tie dicks and get married. Yeah, and then it, we'll talk about my hair later. Um, <laughs> It's a it's a weird thing, dude. How even when he's on vacation, and I have to go to another barber, it's it's an awkward thing. I'm just like I feel like I'm fucking feel like I'm being not loyal to him. Right. I feel like I'm cheating on this man right now. You know, he tells me even though he's not here and it's just a haircut. You know, there's no I don't I don't care about the other barber. I don't love the other barber. I just need my haircut. Right. But I still feel guilty. I wonder why that is, man. Well, because you know they value you. I value him. Yeah. This is awkward. Strange. And he's rubbing his dick on your elbow. I mean, you got to <laughs> Yeah, fucking, maybe this is something more than really, something. It might be time for a new barber now that I'm talking. <laughs> I'm going to play this back and be like, I'm going to super cut. Well, don't ever on. get a black barber then because you'd have it on your fucking neck. <laughs> 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 My barber is black. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe normally it's just not in the way of anything, but. Oh, find an Asian barber. <laughs> <laughs> that's so fucked up. Oh, man. So, yeah, we were talking about podcasting, keto, dicks on elbows, why we fall asleep. Dick bows. We call them dick dick bows. bows. What else were we talking about? Why we fall asleep after fucking. Uh, I think that's it, man. Wrap this bitch up. It's been a little bit. Feeling boozy. How long have we gone? Uh, Feeling a little boozy. I mean, you got anything else you want to add? They don't want to just hear us think about shit. Of course they do. No. All right, cool. Everybody, thanks for listening. It's been Later. real, and we appreciate all of y'all, especially the MILFs. Bye bye. All righty, everybody, thank you very much for listening. We just want to give another quick thanks to all of our sponsors, and I'm going to mix up the order this time because I can. Donkey Dodgers Poker, always there for us. Check them out for a good time. Find them on Facebook. J and W Construction. Much love. Thank you very much. Division Street Auto, 595 Division Street, Pawtucket, Rhode Island. Don't forget about Onlyville Tire. Go see Dory down at Onlyville Tire. She will hook you up. And last but certainly not least, Tops Electric Showroom and Gallery. 
I think I didn't botch that name. But go see them for all of go see them for all of your electrical needs. And have a great night, folks, people, everybody.